so welcome to those of you watching on YouTube. We're also filming live on YouTube. Uh, at a later date, this video will be put up on YouTube. So um, nice of you to join us. Uh, just saying we're here at the final of the Stone Age uh, series uh, for the UK Online Board Game Series events. This is the first week-long event we've done. We've had 22 different players over the course of the week. That was just opened up to uh, the friends of the organisers. Um, we have next week we'll have opened up to a wider audience. So if you are looking at this at a later date, I imagine our tournaments will have slightly more people next time we win one of these. But uh, the way it works, there were six games. Uh, there were six games over the course of the week, and your best three scores count. So over the course of the week, I'm just going to um, send this link so people can watch live. If they'd like to. So we're here, and uh, to get to this point, if we have a look at the um, standings, I'm just going to squeeze these back in here. We can see the standings here. Uh, the score is their best three scores over the course of the game, and the way it worked is you got eight for first, five for second, three for third, and one point for fourth. There was a slight tweak in a three-play game. I think we had a couple of three-play games, and then there was also a joint second at one point, so you'll see that... Uh, Mark's joint second here and my joint second there. Mark and I came exactly tied, which is very hard to do. Uh, let's see how David wins today, says uh, Adder in chat. Uh, so Dave Jameson went win, win, win. He'd already qualified the final at this point. He came back and he won and won. And then he came a narrow second to, I think it was, uh, it was Faith. I think narrowly beat him. So well done to David. Uh, Danton was the other automatic qualifier. He got three wins. He had a win, a third, a third, a win, a fourth, and a win. So he he had three good scores. That's what you kind of need. And then there was a three-way tie for third, which got the other automatic final place between Andy, Mike, and Faith. Uh, close tie breaks, but Andy won by 2%. So Andy sneaked into the final. He's already signed in there. And then Mike had to play a playoff with Faith, Mark, and Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte was in a four-way tie with me. I'm there in eighth, so I just missed out. Well done, Charlotte, for pipping me. The second place in the last match she played was good enough to beat me into the final, uh, the playoff. And the playoff was played early today, and I believe the standings in the playoff were Mike was 10 points ahead of Mark with about 178. Mark was about 168. Uh, then Charlotte was about 165 or something, about three points behind. Then Faith was about a further 20 points behind. Uh, so some good performances, good close scores in some of the games. And one of the games in qualifying, there was 10 points from first to last. Um, so when everyone's sat down, we are going to uh, join them in. So we've got uh, Mikey is starting the table. He's one of the organisers of the event. Yodi is Danton uh, Hope. He is one of the other organisers of this event. Uh, we have not biased it at all because the other two organisers didn't even make the playoffs. Uh, Stone Axolotl is David Jameson. He is the guy who won his first five games. So can anyone stop him? Um, and finally is a YP17. He's Andy. He's from America. I don't know Andy. I imagine he's a friend of Danton's potentially or from Matt's from one of the uh, online groups. But uh, we're just waiting for them to start. And they're going to be logging in and I will be giving some comments, but I'm not going to do too much strategy because in theory, uh, in theory they could, yes, they're all in. Uh, so in theory they could watch and listen in. But I think given I didn't make the final, I believe these guys know the game slightly better than me. Uh, I actually played a game with Mike and Danton and I think I... The game I won, uh, Danton was in, although he beat me in a different game. And I played a game with Mike where I came joint second and Mike came last. So I've beaten two of these three and I had a close second to David. So I've had some good games onto it. I'm going to go to the game and we're going to have a look in. And in Stone Age, uh, if you haven't played before, in the centre spot there's some villages and around the edge you can pick up resources. The way you score points is you're either building buildings down the bottom on the left or you're buying technology cards on the right um, 
So uh, there are different things you can do. So on your turn, you place a worker. So uh, in this case, Mike started, he placed a worker. And on your turn, you place a worker in one of the spots. Some of the spots are limited. So the village spots, there's one spot available here. This increases your agriculture. One for your tools and one for your uh, to get more people. And then you can acquire cards. The cost for the cards is at the top. This costs one, two, three, and four resources uh, of any sort. And the buildings cost a different amount of resources. So we've got some funny ones out, but you can see this building here costs two wood and a clay, or two wood and a brick, I think they're called in the game. And uh, if you plonk it on there, and then uh, at the end of the round, when everything is placed, you take it in turns. So starting with Mike on this particular turn, he will take his people off. So he might take this person off, then he might take the people on the brick place off, because I imagine Mike will be going to the brick place with David. So David will put four, getting some bricks, and Mike will put three. Because um, Mike needs to roll well to get this. Uh, and then so Mike takes this off, he gets a field, he's going to get some clay, and then he's going to buy this card. So it's going to go fast, they all know what they're doing. I'm going to try and give my best insights as to how I think they're doing and what strategy they're going for. Um, but yeah, so Danton ignored a village spot, which is usually, I usually wouldn't do that unless the first card's particularly strong, and I'm not sure it was. I think it gave him two for his agriculture. Um... And, they, and uh, yeah, David rolled pretty well there. Got four clay. So next turn, same again. You're trying to improve the, the, your, your efficiency whilst also picking up things that score you points. Now, the buildings will score points based on the value of the resources. And the resources will, uh, woods are worth three, four, five, and six around the top. So wood, clay, stone, and gold. And co they correspond to the value you need to roll on the dice to get them. So if I send two people to get wood, for every three pips, I can get one wood. So wood's worth three, effectively. And then when you build a building, for example, this building here, it's a wood is three, a wood is three, and a brick is four. That's why it's worth 10 points. On these buildings, you can kind of mix what resources you spend. But if I go to this building, I spent three gold. Gold's worth six. I would get 18 points for that building. So this, this, is a, this, this building here is the most powerful building in the game. And this is a decent spot, actually. This is a decent card because it gets you two points per building. So if you spend the game over the course of the game and you build six or seven or eight buildings, that can be worth 12, 14, 16 points. But I generally think going in the village at the start of the game is the correct decision. Uh, this card, I think, is the strongest card. Three points per building and three points itself. But I was chatting to Adam, uh, so which is Spirit Charge. He's played all the events here. Adam and I came tied in seventh, but we both missed out. To acquire this card, you're spending four resources. Let's say you're spending the four cheapest wood. You're spending uh, 12 points to acquire this card. Because if you use the wood for this building, for example, or some of the other buildings, they're worth 12 points. So for that to be a cost-efficient way of doing things, that's got to get you more than 12 points back at the end of the game, which it will do if you have, uh, as soon as you get four buildings, you're getting points back. But is it better than just spending the wood for some of these? So you'll see when someone dives in for the last card here, it's usually because they think that card's going to score them more, or in theory that should do. So in this particular case, Danton's diving in for that. He's now going to get, if Danton gets both those cards, it's not ridiculous, he's going to spend the whole game building buildings because now every building is worth five extra points. That's not a ridiculous thing to do. Uh, but next turn he is going fourth, and he yet again will miss out on a... Um, spot in the village. Another thing you can do is acquire a lot of tools. Uh, tools allow you to improve your dice roll. So for example, David is gone to the forest with four people. When he picks those people up, he will roll four dice and for every three pips, he'll get a wood. However, for every tool he gets, he's got one tool over here and he's gonna be picking another tool up. You'll see him pick this man up before using the building using the um, forest, he can add tools to the role, he can add values to the role. Welcome on Twitch, we've got some watchers here, so I'm just going through roughly how to play and then we'll be talking about what sort of different things people are doing. There is a strategy called starvation as well, and that's where you race to 10 workers as quick as you can, you forego feeding, losing 10 points, and hope that the number of workers you've got kind of leverages its, its ability. 
And this is a, so I'll show you this card here as well. Last thing I'll show you, this, uh, this is the kind of mixed resource bag. What you do when you take this is you roll a dice for each player in the game, which corresponds to a different good you can take. So Danton's rolled this, he's taken the field. And the, the higher the pip, the better the dice. But then in uh, turn order, you kind of draft those, which means if you're, in this case, like Mike, if you're in the last position to take uh, in relation to where the person is who took the card, you're going to get the worst thing. Uh, I've got some watchers along, so if you've got anything to say, if you've got any questions, or if you think, like Adam said, uh, he says, let's see how David wins today, um, we will call it out. But yeah, if you want to comment in the Twitch chat, I will see you, and I can reply to anything you say. Another one has mixed bags. And this time, Danton gets the worst resource. So, if you look at what David Jameson's got, he's Stone Axolotl, and he's he's the guy you have to watch out for because he's he's pretty decent this game, it seems. I mean, played one game with him, but he beat me. He, he thought I was going to beat him, but I didn't have enough end game scoring, and he didn't realise. Uh, he's already got two stone and four clay, and he's, he's able to use those tools, like we talked about, to get an extra wood. So although he hasn't got any points yet, he's got 12 resources, um, which is pretty good. He might take another tool, so yeah. So he's, what he's going to do, uh, he's probably going to try and get this card here. This card will score him for the number of tools he has as the game goes on. And he will also, if it's there, take this card. This is a very good card for him because he's got a ton of stuff he can chuck into points. In theory, Mike should probably take this card now because Mike's also got eight resources, so Mike could chuck seven resources into this. It depends whether he wants an extra person. There's no way, I don't think there's any way it gets back to Mike and that building still be there. So Mike should probably take it now. Uh, now he's going for people. So I think David will take that building if no one else does. As a chat sheet, Danton probably should take it as well. Uh, because Danton's got five points for a building. So if he can build this for just one clay. Wow. Wow, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I would have I would have potentially looked at building. I thought someone would have built that. Because for Danton, it would have been one clay to build that building. And it's worth, it would have then been worth nine points to him. It's the cheapest building you'll possibly build. But I will tell you this now. Uh, yeah, my, Mike. I think Mike's lucky to get that. I think he should have taken that last turn. But uh, who am I to tell you? So basically, I'm giving what I think is the correct strategy. Uh, however, I did not make the final. These guys all are better players than I am uh, over the course of the week uh, anyway. Um, I did win a game. I did win a game. And I came second three times, I think. And sadly, came last twice. If you are watching anyway, tomorrow is a can't stop tournament. So let's have a look what's going on. So Andy will need to feed. Danton won't. Mike will need to feed and David will need to feed. So I wonder... If David just sends all these guys feeding now. He could technically build. So he could technically build this building here. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to try and get one clay using his three tools. Build this building here. And then sell his last guy to get a bit of food. I think that's what he's going to try and do. So watch to see if I've predicted that right. He's going to try and build this building. Looking at other people. Mike could have built it. Mike could have built it, but he chose not to. He says hi. Right. Uh, he did not. So I wonder why he sent one guy to pick some clay up. I wonder why he did that. I have to ask him at a later date. 
Oh, he's going first next time, so he could just put. He could take this building next time. So maybe he was just getting in the right play. That seems weird to split your guys up like that. But again, he's a uh, he's he's the guy who's not won a game. He's not lost a game yet. He's come second once and won five. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> uh, if you are following on Twitch, if you if you are watching on Twitch, if you can follow me. Uh, I do stream a lot of the events on and off uh, that we play during the event. I'm probably going to stream Can't Stop Tomorrow, um, which people can watch for, like, I mean, I, I, it's not giving anything away, it's open information, so. Yeah. Okay, so he's got eight food, which is enough for one and a bit round, so he's going to have to feed next turn. Now, you've got to be careful. Danton will probably want to take this card as well. There's another thing as well. So sometimes the games will be short, sometimes the games will be long. One of the ways that the games can be short is if someone kind of races through a stack of buildings. Twenty. That building was worth 29 points for Mike. He traded in a ton of resources. He also got a card that's scored for people. So he might be looking to get a few more people. And I think Danton will not get to this building. I don't know, maybe he will. This building's decent, actually. It scores you, it feeds you for the round and scores you a point per building. But Mike might take the second one in. Probably won't. You'll probably take the first one. Or go and get some extra people. There's another one to seven building. So David and Danton can score highly for this building here. You can just chuck in up to seven resources and score the points for them. This is one of the few games where getting extra workers isn't always the correct decision. I've seen games with this one without getting any extra workers, but usually the longer the game goes on, if you don't get those extra workers, you won't win. You need those extra actions, and obviously the longer you've got more workers, the better. So, yeah, I think Danton is fine to get that. It feeds him for the round as well, so that's pretty good. And David built us this building here? Nope. Maybe Danton takes it. David's still going to take this building, actually. Maybe he's choosing not to do that. This building is worth 20 points to him because he can spend five clay. But yeah, it's been played at a snappy pace. If you look at their timers, uh, no, no one's below three minutes. So Mike's just going to spend one or two resources building this building, just so no one, either just to get up his building count or just so no one gets it. He's not actually scoring points for buildings because we've seen Danton pick up uh, all three so far that have come out of the building scoring cards. And there haven't been too many green cards to come out. Green cards, when I say green cards, these are the ones that give you different culture. At the end of the game, you will square the number of different cultures you've got in each set you've got. So if I've got this and this, I'll get four points. If I've got this, this and three others, I'll get 25 points. So I've yet to predict what David's going to do. My prediction is he's going to take this building. But he needs to feed as well. So my prediction is going to go here and then send two people to get food. Nope. Can't do this. Can't win. I wonder if there's a strategy to leverage your tools, whether sending, mathematically speaking, sending one worker here, one worker here, and one worker here is better than sending all three to the same spot. I... Haven't got the time to work that out at the moment. Maybe that's what he's doing because when you've got more tools, you can go to those points where you send a person and a person and a person and a person to different spots. But yeah, so uh, the people who have a lot of meeples will benefit from a longer game. In the playoff uh, where Mike won, he got to 10 people. He ended up winning narrowly ish by about 10 points, I think, which is, a, is effectively one extra building or maybe one extra scoring card. 
Uh, so well done to Mike. But he, I think he benefited from no one rushing the end of the game. The buildings were bought roughly equally. All the tons were bought. They were bought roughly equally. And the game ended at the same term when the cards and the buildings ran out. Sometimes one of those things will happen faster and then you get done in if you've spent a lot of the game getting extra workers because unless you've got those cards that score for workers, they don't directly score you something. So I was right that David's gone here. Probably depends on the strength of each of the tools. A one on food and a two on wood and a three on clay would work. Yeah, you benefit, I think you, if you go to different spots, you've got more chance of using the tools to fill the gaps between the next resource. Maybe that's correct, I don't know, but I, like, just feels like sending all your people to the cheapest spot and using all your tools is the best way of doing it. Uh, so he gets, he gets two wood from his one person there, he gets two food from his one person there. And he's built a building for 20 points. Notice that he's built a building for 20 points and he's still got seven resources. So thanks for following along, Mark. I appreciate it. Mark came effectively fifth. He qualified for the playoff and then came second in the playoff. So when we do the overall standings, I imagine Mark will be fifth, I think. So well done. That is true. But you'd potentially waste those pips if you put them all together or separated them. I'd have to sit down and do some maths to see if tactically that's better, I think. But yeah, Mark says, problem comes when your tools are too powerful and you waste pips. Um, We'll see. So Mike has 44 points. He built another building uh, for 16 points and he built the one to seven building, did he? Did he get four clay and chuck it in? I imagine that's what happened. All right. So these are the green cards. We haven't really seen anyone pick the green cards up, but what you'd be looking for with the, the green cards or the culture cards is trying to get um, trying to get to eight different types. Now I think this one's quite powerful. Um, this effectively allows you two resources of choice when you want to use it. You get it, you can use it at a later date. And those two resources can be double gold. So you could be spending three wood to get double gold and some technology. And the fact that you've got their flexibility, which means if you come to a building near the end of the game and you're tight on resources, you can just trade for the exact two you need. So I don't think this is a straightaway pick from where it is now, but I think it's a decent card in general. It doesn't really help if you haven't got enough culture to score the bottom half. But if you have, it's worth getting. Mike can take the other spot in the village here. Mike can take another worker. Going all the way around and he gets two shots. So Mike seems to be taking, Mike and Danton seem to be taking much more time on their decisions. Uh, to either David's, uh, David's probably just very familiar with the game and Mike, and uh, I don't, I know Danton hasn't played too much of this online. His 159 ELO has come strictly from this week, <laughs> but he's done quite well. Yeah, I like that card, but uh, Mike needs to make sure he gets resources now. He actually only needs one wood, so he can send, but he also needs another three food. So I imagine he sends two for wood and two for food. Something along those lines. And I like that card because, in theory, if you're just looking at the cost of the resource, the card pays for itself just in resources and also scores some endgame points. Uh, only pays itself obviously pays itself depending on where it is in the line, but effectively that card's worth three more points than the materials used to buy it. If you can spend the the materials you get on buildings. All right, Danton's next action will be, I imagine, to feed. Uh, the Andy can build this building here. 
but you'd need one more resource to be able to get this card and this building. And David can build any building he wants. So David is just, I imagine he would take a field if it got to him, but David is ignoring the extra people. He's choosing to try and win the game with five people, I imagine. I was speaking to Matt Hathrell earlier, and he said that not getting at least six or seven people, just you just can't win the game. I disagree with that slightly. I generally think more people are better, especially if you can, if you're not like spending too much time to just feed them every turn. So if you can kind of mix in a few fields with a few people and get your scoring elsewhere. But I also think I was chatting to someone else. I can't remember who it was. I think if What's he doing? What's David doing? He needs food. So, oh, he's going to get food off the card. Yes, yeah, so he's actually going to get enough food off this card. So, I imagine he's going to get some wood and then build two buildings. Can he build two buildings? Yeah, yes. One, two. Yes, he can. He can build this building and this building with just wood. So, this one and this one. He needs eight resources. He's got seven. But these two buildings together only need one gold and one clay together. Sort of, depends on what he uses for this one, but yeah. So he can build both these, he's got two workers left, so maybe he tries to do this and this. Danton needs to feed. Wow, so I think he's, he's I assume he's going to starve here. Because he can't afford to feed. Alright, so David's going to get two buildings here. If he's done this right. Yeah, I think so. And he took that one because that's, in theory, the one Alex could have, uh, Andy could have built. Actually, Andy's used all his workers up, so it didn't actually matter which one he took. But Mike and Danton. Has Mike just gone there to do him in? Oh no, Mike can build it off this card. Yeah, so maybe that was a mistake. That was probably a mistake from David. David should have taken this building because Mike couldn't afford to build that one. And David can't build this one because he won't have any. He he needs uh, he needs two gold for these two buildings. So that is. I'm not sure Mike did that to do David in, but I think if David that was a slight mistake. If David had gone on this building first. Mike couldn't have built this, he wouldn't have had enough resources to do it. But Mike's got five resources, he spends three of them to get this card, and then this card will give him the stone and gold he needs for this card. So well done, Mike. Like I say, if you are watching, we've got a Can't Stop tournament tomorrow at 3 o'clock. That is going to be automated by Board Game Arena. I put up a video in the group where you can have a look at me playing one and a bit rounds and showing you how the tournament works. So I'd encourage you to have a look at that just to make sure you're aware of what's going to happen tomorrow. But again, they're free to sign up. You sign up in the same way. You come to the Discord server and you chat. You just uh, In the chat, you just pop in your Board Game Arena username. And then the hopefully board game arena will do all the work for us. It is Mike's turn. He didn't use it. Why didn't Mike use that? I wonder if that was a mistake or whether he just went there to stop David building it. I can't imagine he'd do that that early on in the game when he could have built that himself. He could have actually built that building. That seems a bit weird. Uh, I might ask him if he's, if he's on Discord that I can chat to him without. Actually, that's probably unfair because I, I shouldn't be able to give his strategy away, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give his strategy away if that was strategic. He thought for a while, so I imagine it wasn't just a misclick. I think he thought about it because he took a while to make that decision. That's a good roll. Right, so Danton is so Mike is Mike starving? Oh, Mike's choosing not to starve. That might be it. Mike's going to starve if he doesn't give his people two wood. And 
David's built that building. And Danton's going to starve. So Mike is fed two. So Mike is fed two wood. So he didn't starve. People will eat resources weirdly. And Danton's got no food, one agriculture, not enough resources to feed them. So Danton just has to. Uh, you still have to click to say that you're losing ten points, but Danton's going to go down to thirty points. Here. So he's gone down to thirty. Uh, so I think the strongest spot early on is the agriculture one, the fields one. Um, because you can get things that score for your agriculture as well, it just allows you to move up there. But there are different strategies in the game. The starvation strategy, I've, I've lost to it a lot. I just can't do it myself. And that's where you just get loads of people, choose to starve, but use those people to score more points than you're losing for starving. Uh, spot in the village if you want it. Now, last turn, we saw three different people pick up three different technology cards. So it doesn't look like someone's going for the set. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out, but it doesn't look like anyone's going for the set. Um, and then next week, we have... Uh, Sock in the mind calendar, which is a heavier Euro game than this one, about the passage of time and some nice little gears that move around. Uh, Sock in is another worker placement game, and you uh, and you've got the same sort of format as we have this week. So there were going to be two events on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So six events in total. Your best three scores count for the final, which will be on Saturday next week. We can do finals on Saturday. Whilst we're all locked in, should hopefully everyone who qualified for the final this time has made it. So thank you very much for doing that, guys. But you can play in the event without playing the final. That's absolutely fine. You can just come along and play some fun games with some strangers or some people you know, if you know some of us. And then next Sunday is the Sunday Fun Day event of Takenoko, which is the pan everyone calls it the panda game. I don't call it the panda game, but I did at one point because it sounds very like Takedo and I get confused. They're very both oriental style games and uh, can play completely differently, but they sound similar to those people who are not as sure. So Danton is going to get a field and score for fields. Now remember Danton early on got the building scoring. He's scoring six points every building he's got. So he's currently got 18 points at the end of the game, plus this, plus a few other cards. I, I could have kept track of all the cards, but... Uh, I couldn't be bothered, to be honest. <laughs> you get a fair idea. I mean, Matt, I mean Matt, Matt Hathor was watching one of the games earlier, and he was very good at keeping track of what people were doing. David has got this one, which scores him for people, and this one scores him for tools. Now, he's not really going out of his way to get extra people, but this card by itself is just worth 10 points. It's two times the number of people you got, because you start with five people. It's just worth 10 points. He's also... So I imagine what's going to happen is he's going to take this card first so that it has the tools to guarantee taking this card. So we'll see if he does that. Before he rolls for wood, he will take this card first. But we will see. Maybe I'm wrong again. I can't seem to predict him. If he's doing different things to what I'd do, that's why he's winning, I guess. So Andy at the bottom, I haven't really been noticing exactly what cards he's picked up. He's definitely picked up two different technology cards. So I think if anyone's going for the technology cards, it will be Andy. He's also got nine resources. He's going to be spending three of them here, but he'll finish with six resources. Which is currently more than anyone else. Mike's got none and Danton's got one. So if Andy's picked up a lot of cards, because he hasn't picked up many buildings, if Andy's picked up a lot of cards, he could have a lot of endgame scoring coming his way, given that he is 30-odd 30, 30 points behind the leaders currently. But this game is made up of a mix of endgame scoring and current scoring. 
Uh, it's about half and half. Some, sometimes you'll be more building weighted, so you'll get 100 points during the game and 60 at the end. Sometimes it'll be more about the end game scoring, but I generally think end game scoring is usually higher than the buildings you've got, especially if the game's gone long. But it doesn't look like this game, they're going out of their way to build lots of buildings. They've all built a few. I didn't see exactly what David did, yes, but he's used he's used the tools. So he must have taken this one first and used the tools to get enough wood to take this one. Um, but David's going to starve unless he feeds food. So I know he's fed already. They've already done the feeding. That's fine. So I think Andy has got has got the technology, the cult, what I'll call the culture ones. Um, and he's also got some cards that score for fields. That's why he's taking this one over this one. This one gets him a field, but will also, uh, I imagine he's taking this over this because uh, he's got fields going. If he didn't have fields going, he would take this one because there's a decent chance he'll get a field or a tools anyway. But I imagine if he's got fields going, he takes this. Danton might be tempted to take one of these. Uh, he's currently scoring six points per building. If he can get one of these, he'll score. We can get this one, he'll score eight. Now, Mike's currently winning, but he's got no resources, so I wonder what Mike's choices are. Beg your pardon? I think all th at least two of the one to sevens have gone. I think have all three gone? At least two of them have. And the one to seven is the most powerful building because if it comes out near the end and you've got a stack of resources, so for example, Andy, if it came out now, Andy would have 20, uh, 23 points worth of resources he can chuck, chuck into it, which is way more than any normal building. So I think Danton's got a choice of whether he goes for this or whether he takes a village spot. I imagine he'll take this. I, yeah, I thought he would. But I've not been I've been right about half the time, so I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest to an expert at this. Alright. David's been avoiding getting extra people, so I can't imagine he'll book the trend now. He could go for this building and try and get some clay. Uh, okay, what's he what's he planning on? He might be looking at getting this. Oh no, he's sending his last guy to get food. He's just he's just stocking up on some resources. I imagine he's going to be using those resources to buy some cards. Um, hmm, does Danton take, Danton could take an extra person here. And Andy, I, I think he's going for technologies. Andy might take it. I think if Danton doesn't, one of these two will take an extra person here. And he doesn't need to feed this turn because he's going to get a field off this card, um, which will give him four fields and three food for his seven people. So the only turn he will need to feed is if he takes the hut. So he could take. Okay. It's a bit of a slow turn because everyone's run out of resources with the exception of Andy here. It's risky sending one person to that spot. I know he's going to get a tool. That's no, not risky. You don't really want to ever send anyone somewhere where you can get nothing. It just feels like such a bad, bad feel. Oh, so uh, Andy's going to send some people for some stone. He probably sends three. Yeah. All right, so it takes the tool first. And 
then he takes the wood. I imagine. Oh, no, he's gone for stem. I suppose that's the one he needed to guarantee, because otherwise he can't build this building. He could have rolled a double one if he'd use a tool, and then he wouldn't be able to do it. And final action does this, and he tools tools can't be used. He can't get another wood, but at least he got one. That was a quick turn from David. He just got a field, some food, and a wood or two. That's a huge roll, like. But Mike's saving his tools for food. All right, so he can take a field here, or of tools. He could decide. He could decide. Sorry, people message me. He could decide just to say, towards the end of the game, the fields and tools aren't worth anything if you're not scoring for them at the end of the game, and actually resources are worth more because you can chuck resources into buildings that have yet to build. So, towards the end of the game, what you'll see people doing is taking resources over the better things. So. The sixes and fives are generally better, but at the end of the game, they're not worth as many points if you're not scoring, if you're not getting scoring cards for those. Yeah, so it's a good thing he took, did he, Mike took the field, yeah, but he could use his tools to get extra food. So Mike has got enough food for three rounds now. David has enough food for two and a half rounds. Danton uh, will probably only have enough food for this round, and Mike only, so uh, Andy only has enough food for this round. So that's an awful roll. 12 or 5 dice, oof. 5 dice I think you should average 17 and a half I think. So if you if you assume the average of, on the, uh, the average roll you get on a dice is 3 and a half, then when you roll 5 dice you just multiply by 3 and a half to get what you expect. It gives you a rough idea of how many workers you need to send out to certain spots to get what you need. Okay, I've just been told that my video stream covers the fourth player's information, by the way, so I I can't move the... I'm going to move my face. Thank you very much, Mark. I'm going to move my face so you can see Andy's information. Apologies. So, Andy, if you're watching at a later date, I'm so sorry. You have been playing this game. You're doing all right. You've got a lot of resources. And, Mark, I appreciate the comment. If you are watching on Twitch or watching on Facebook at a later date, I would appreciate a follow if you follow me on Twitch. Uh, the more followers I get, the more I can unlock from Twitch and the more I'm able to do, so that would be great. And it costs you nothing to do. Same again, if you're watching on Twitch, go and follow my YouTube channel. I'm The Dice Cup on YouTube. Uh, which is where this video will be put up, but I have to wait 24 hours before I can put it up. Just of uh, streaming rules. So Mike's taking this building. This is decent. I, I don't. Uh, this is decent. It will score you one point per building you've built. That's fine. But you get some stuff as well. So it's probably worth. It's definitely worth the resource. And David has taken this again. It's just worth ten points. So I wonder if David's just taking it to stop other people. He's definitely got at least. Once he gets this, he will have at least five of them. Two from this card. Two from another. I think he got a single card at some point as well. And that means that any person who gets throughout the extra game is worth five points. And maybe he starts picking some people up at some point. He's got a field. I don't know. This card is... Uh, Mike took it. I like taking these cards. They give you food. This is this gives you seven foods. It's like going here with three workers. Or more. It's like going here with four workers. That Something like that. Yeah, I'm going to leave. Uh, I appreciate it, Adam. I think I just need to relocate when I'm doing Stone Edge or something like that. I just need to relocate the the frame for my face just to the side a bit. Um, so, yeah, YP17 is 
uh, Andy. I could just scroll up so you can see what it's got, but I don't want to keep scrolling from down, otherwise your eyes are going like that. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. It's possibly not as professional as it could be, but I have, if I have, what I should have is lots of different overlays, lots of different games. And ideally, when I start, if I start doing this uh, enough in the future, I was playing, I can't remember what game it was on stream, and I was playing a game where I needed to keep looking down what people had. I think it was uh, Keyflower. So obviously you're bidding for things up here, and then you go down to look at my board, and then Jack's and Amy's and yours. And I was going up and down and up and down, and just a bit like um, Roll for the Galaxy as well, just to see what I thought other people were going to do. I was going like that and like that, and I imagine it's possibly not a nice thing to watch, especially when I'm doing it so quickly. If I go down, look at it, think for a bit, and go back up, it's fine, but it was like a yo-yo. So you'll notice that... Uh, Danton and Andy keep having to feed so they've got their extra workers but they haven't really matched with their agriculture too well Andy's done alright actually uh, but occasionally starts to feed and David yeah because he got clear off that okay he got clear off the card he got which allowed him to build the building he got so he timed that well and it looks like he's stopped picking tools up. I know he's scoring a bit for tools, but it looks like he's stopped picking them up, like going going for them. He's trying to trade it into points now. He's also, if you look at, we didn't notice this, but if you go down a bit, down here, this is how many buildings there are left in each stack. So there are five, 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 and two. So in theory, the game could be two rounds to go, even though there are probably about three rounds worth of cards to go. Unless you keep buying them in fours, that should be three rounds of the game left. But if they buy these two buildings, there will be two. So Mike's going to choose an item. This is where he decides. If he's not scoring for fields, he might take a goal. That's what he did. So he's switched now. It's that time in the game where if you're not scoring for fields, the goal's actually probably worth more because you can trade the gold in for six points by buying a building with it, buying a building needing gold. So Danton takes the field and gold and gold. Uh, I don't know who's going to win this. I haven't been tracking the cards they've picked up all too well. I know Danton's scoring six points per building. Or is it seven? I think he's scoring seven points per building. So he's scoring 21 points his buildings. I haven't seen what other scoring cards he's picked up. I know Andy's picked up some of the culture cards, but I can't believe he's got anywhere near eight. I also know he's got some cards that score for the fields he's got, but I don't think he's got super many. I know David's got uh, at least three cards that score for people, I think. So he's going to score 25 for his people, unless he picks any more up. Um, so I think it's going to be close. I can't see anyone running away with this. I haven't seen, I haven't really been watching what Endgame scoring my cards, I'm afraid. Uh, but in terms of feeding, Mike probably will have to feed for the rest of the game. He's got 13 food, he only needs three around. Uh, it's a decent roll. Got lots of wood. Uh, Danton's going to score for the field here, so and he probably takes another field because he's, he's starting to score for fields here. And I think Andy takes the field as well, because I think Andy's scoring for fields too. Oh, no, nope, I changed my mind, I was wrong. Uh, now, this is good for David, because now David doesn't have to feed probably for the rest of the game. He has two food and he needs one per round. So, he probably will need one more, one more food over the course of the game to feed. Right, now Andy's hoping that he can build several buildings in this last round. He's got by f him and Mike have got the most resources. This one scores you four points. This got this one scores you points equal to four lots of one resource. So if you can spend only gold, you can get twenty four points. Uh, 
these we can see if someone's going for culture because uh, they can't have either of these. So if someone's picked up some culture cards, I think Andy's picked up some. I know Mike's picked up some. I think Danton's picked up at least one. Um, so if anyone's going for culture, you can you'll you'll be able to tell because they'll go on one of these quite early. But yeah, so I think Andy's got about five culture, five or six. I haven't really been watching, I'm afraid. But I think Andy will probably get another building now. So Danton needs a gold for this one. Mike needs another gold and he can score 24. Uh, Andy's probably going to go for this building here. Because he can do it without getting anything extra. So David could just get all the building actions this turn. Or oh, maybe he wants this tool card. He probably wants the tool card. Because that card's worth five points. But he's spending nine to get it. Maybe not. This is where this card's with eight points for three players and six points for Mike, but you're spending twelve points to get it. So I don't think it's worthwhile. And if if so there's one building left in this stack, but if not all four cards go, that it will be buildings that end it. We're coming close to the end of the game now, if you look at the scores. Mike and David have 57, 58. I know Danton is scoring for buildings. He's scoring seven points for buildings. So he's going to try and build, maybe get to five or six buildings towards the end of the game, if he can do that. And I know Andy's probably got technologies. I imagine he's, I haven't been watching, but I imagine he's got about five or six different ones, uh, which is 25 to 36 points. But we will see if there's any come out in that last round and see whether people die for them. So I think David's last action will be to take a card, if there's one left. Ooh. Mike's left one person off, just in case no one takes that building, because if no one takes that building, Mike can take it. But I think Andy will take that building, because Andy just needs one more play to do it. Someone's adding me on Facebook, someone I don't know. Potentially need to swap which screen I get my notifications on. I have two monitors. One to the side. So in chat, guys, it's got four viewers. Can you let me know who you think you you think's going to win? Um, I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, Andy should take the building. Yeah. David took the card, that was good. And Mike, I guess he just gets some resources, yeah. And Danton, he's timed out. Danton is, we're pretty nice, we don't actually call people. But who do you think is going to win? So I know we've got Adam and Mark have commented in the chat, we've got some people who are keeping silent. Who do you think is going to win this game of, uh, this final of Stone Age? Matt Hathwell won the first event we had, which was the Seven Wonders event. Uh, he cannot win this one, so we can have a repeat winner. Is it going to be David, Mike, Danton or Andy? What do you think? Even if you don't know, who do you want to win? Uh, I've got a comment saying he hasn't been paying as much attention as I have. He's been playing a different game, but it's hard to bet against David, given his record. Uh, there will probably be one more turn left. Not been following closely, so I'll go with David. So David, you've got some support based on your record. 
people will think you win because that's kind of what you do. But I think it's close. I think it's close. They're not commenting on the chat. Now, some of the time, David will say how he thinks people are doing. That was a bad roll. I don't think it mattered, though. I think Mike's got some technology cards as well, but I don't think he's got as many as Andy has. Uh, we will see, though. Is anyone going to struggle to feed? Let's see, no, Danton can feed. Andy's going to build two buildings here, so he's going to catch up a bit. They'll all have about four buildings. David's got three and the rest of them will have four, but Danton scores uh, 24 points of his four because they're scoring six a building, I think. Uh, now, Andy's going to struggle to feed, I think. If he doesn't roll well. Okay, that's uh, that's just enough. Just got enough there. Now he had more than if he had one food left over. So yeah, I think he needed at least a three there to get enough food. So he's moved to 54 points. Mike's on 85. I don't think David's people and field scoring cards are going to be good enough because he hasn't got... I'll take a field, yeah. He hasn't got enough people and fields to make them huge. So, depending on what Mike's cards are, I'm probably going to say Mike because he's just got a 30, he's got about a 30 point lead at the moment. But we will see. I haven't been tracking the points cards. I could have done that, but I kind of wanted to talk you guys through the game. So, into the, what's possibly the last round. Uh, there are four civilization cards, so that will not end it. But if someone builds this first building, so this is where we get into some interplay here. If someone wants to end the game, they will strive to build that building. If someone wants to delay the game, they will put a worker on that and refuse to build it. So if someone thinks they need another turn, and I would imagine that anyone who is still waiting for maybe a 7th or 8th technology might want to delay the round. But you have to kind of waste a worker. You have to put a worker on that first building and choose not to build it. One of the options you can do is when you, once you've taken your people off, any people who still got on the board, you can say pass without activating. I can't remember the phrasing of it, but uh, you basically don't use remaining people. I think is what it says. Uh, it's been played a moderately snappy game. I think we played some games in under an hour during qualifying. We're hit it. We're coming up to close to an hour now, and this is possibly the last turn. Um, you can see that David's got the full four minutes, Mike's got three and a half minutes, and Andy's got three minutes. So it's been played pretty snappily. Right, so... David had a chance to end the game there. He chose not to. He's building the other building with exactly the same cost. So I imagine he does not want the game to end. He He's very good at working out where he is in games. So he's. I don't think he feels like he's winning. And I think Mike then therefore does feel like he's winning because he's possibly going to try and end it. If Mike builds that, the game will end. And we won't know whether Mike's going to build it till everyone else has done their thing. Uh, it'd be good if Danton can build two buildings. Remember, he's scoring extra points for buildings. David takes the first card, I imagine. Scores him for his tools, yeah. Uh, might might take, 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 take the technology if he hasn't got it already. But he needs what resources does he need. He needs stone. As does Danton. So Mike, in theory, could put five guys there. To try and stop Danson getting a stone he needs, but it's not enough really. You need to put six down to really hinder him. Is there anything else that you can score for? Well, the only other things you can score for. So he's going to get that card. So Mike has some technologies. Again, I don't think Mike's got as many as Andy has. 
and he's potentially got the last two. So I remember this card here. Mike got the other one of those. So I know this is a unique one that Andy hasn't got. And I imagine he's also, this is unique as well. So I think Andy's going to score. He might have, he might have close to eight now. So I imagine he's going to score somewhere between 49 and 64 points for those technologies. And I think Andy's picked up more cards than most people because he's built. No, they've all built about the same amount of buildings. Apart from this time, Danton's going to get to six if he can do it. Uh, Danton's gone on the field spot, so he doesn't have to feed this round. Uh, David's last action, he could... David's last action, he could get an extra person, because I know extra people are worth something. No, sorry, apologies, he needs a clay. David needs a clay still to build that building. So if you were worried about someone needing a resource to beat you, you could put all your workers in that spot and try and fill it up. That is the reason I did not make the playoffs. I... I was vindictive to someone else and I tried to stop them getting the stone they needed. I filled, I filled up all but one spot. He put his one guy there, managed to get the stone, so I didn't do him in. Um, it was more of like a, a side inconvenience. Like I, I could do it because I could, not because I was being a git. I still needed the stone myself. And then on the very next round, he did exactly the same to me, uh, but much a much more vindictive way. So I deserved it, but he completely filled up the gold and I needed one gold to build a building. And I lost by like three points, so to Adam. Uh, yeah, I imagine Mike's probably favourite here. I imagine he's got somewhere like five or six culture cards and some cards that score him for bits and bobs, I guess. Mike is building one building. And now Mike got a, he did get one card that scored him for his buildings, so it was only a, five, a, a one pointer, so he's going to score five points for that. I think these scores are going to be close. I think the winning score is going to be about 170, maybe. So we will see. But I think Andy's going to be a dark horse here, although he's not building a building here, so he's got a lot to catch up. Mike's going to be on 100 points going into scoring. And Mike will have some endgame scoring, so Andy needs a lot to catch that up because he'll be 46 points behind. Danton's now a minute over his time limit. I wonder if it's just a bad internet connection because he seems to seems to happen a lot. Unless he's doing something else at the same time. <laughs> Look at that. They've each sent one person and they can do that because they've got enough tools to counteract a bad dice roll. Does Danton need a gold? Yeah, I suppose he's going to chuck gold into this building here. And he needs a second clay for this building. Where's he getting his stone from? Oh, he's, he's, apologies, not gold stone. No, he sent gold as well. Yeah, he sent a stone. So I assume he does... This is risky. He could roll bad in a fair that he doesn't get all the things he needs. So he needs one clay and one stone. So how is he going to do it? So David says, I need to, David thinks Mike's going to win. And David needs Mike to tell him he's got no bonuses. So Danton got enough. In fact, he got more than enough. He's got an extra stone he didn't need. Double six. Pretty good. So David thinks Mike's going to win because David's asking Mike how many... Well, he's not directly asking. He's just saying, I hope you haven't got many end game points. Um... David did this to me. Actually, we were playing. He, he assumed that I'd beaten him, but again, same thing. I didn't have any end, didn't have as many end game points as he, as he thought I had. 
So I think Mike is favourite here, but we will see. Again, it depends on the quantity of cars he's picked up. It's hard to keep track of four different people. But I imagine Andy's getting 49, 64 points for his culture cards. And he can not build a building. So I just think Andy's got too far to catch up. He's on 54 points. He needs to catch up the difference and then outscore them on the end game points. So I think uh, I don't think Andy's going to win. Doesn't mean he's going to come last. I just don't think he's going to win. And Danton's got 36 points for his buildings, plus anything else he picked up. He's got six agriculture and eight people. So if he's got any of those as well, they score quite well. All right, now on to Mike. So Mike doesn't have to end the game here. If Mike doesn't think he's won, he can refuse to build that building. But it's probably wrong because he's not going. He's going third next time, and he won't get the choice of the good stuff. So he can build it. He's deciding: is the game going to end? Okay, he will take whatever scores in points. So if he can't score for farm, he won't take it. If he can't score for tools, he won't take it. So it'll give us an indication of what his scoring tiles are. And if he's got a choice between the two. So he is scoring something for his fields. Otherwise, he would have taken a wood if he wasn't scoring either of those. So Danton is not scoring for tools. And he is scoring for tools. There you go. It gives you a bit of indication what sort of scoring cards they've got. And then is he going to end the game? Drum roll, please. I wonder if he's going to take some time to think whether he's winning or not. He's going to count his end game points and decide whether it's enough. And if he thinks he's got enough, he'll end it. But the problem is... If he doesn't end it, it's better to go first in the last round because you just get to take the good cards, like if a really good building comes out or something. He's ended it. Okay, let's have a look. David scores 70 end game points. Andy scores 82. He did have all eight technologies. Danton scores 74. Mike only scored 42, which means the winner is Danton by 10 points. He got it. Where does he get his end game points for? He got. We knew this was happening, but I, didn't, I must have missed one. I only thought he had seven, I think. So he had 48 points from his buildings. He had six buildings at eight points each. He had six fields at four points each. And then he just got enough points during the game to catch up. Uh, we thought Andy had the most end game scoring. He did. But all he had were these 64 points and then two, two tool cards. And he just didn't build enough as the game went on. But you can see it was a building in it. They're going to chat to them. I'm just going to pop it there. Thank you, thank you, says Danton. Uh, congrats, Danton. Congrats. Thank you, says Danton. Yeah, my cards were terrible, says Mike. Yeah, we noticed, Mike. Unlucky. Congrats, well played. Did I'll ask a question. Did you consider not ending the game? Yeah, it was a good game for all of them, I think. Danton did very well to pick up. I think it was one round where he picked up two cards that scored him for buildings, and he actually managed to build the most buildings. Uh, yeah, so David took the double people cards that, that uh, Danton would have scored more points off. There was a pause. There was. Yeah. Yeah. So if you didn't end the game, he might have even come last. Because he wouldn't have got that 15-point building. 
But finishing with gold left over is pretty bad. That gold's worth uh, 12 points, actually. Oh, yeah, 12, 10, yeah. So they're worth one point each instead of six points each, so you lose seven points. Uh, we are going to find that out. So anyway, thank you for watching. We are back with Can't Stop tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Please tune in for that um, if you're watching on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, this will come up after the Can't Stop tournament has started. But if you are watching on YouTube, you can follow me on Twitch. I will be streaming the majority of that tournament. It's a push you look game, so when I play live, I'll probably do awfully, but we will see. Um, so they're just having a bit of an endgame chat. I really like that in this group of people. They're talking about strategy at the end of the game, how they could have won. Who comes second in the competition? Uh, I don't know. We haven't sorted that out yet, but uh, uh, so we will have to discuss that as some uh, organisers. Yeah, so Andy said he should have made the game another turn. But he was tempted by the two culture cards he needs to complete the sets. But yeah, you would have gone first. Yeah, so Danton tried something new and it worked. Uh, that has been our Stone Age tournament. So please tune in next week. We've got uh, we've got Can't Stop tomorrow. We've got Ter, the Talk in the Mind calendar all next week, culminating in final on Saturday. We've got Takenoko next Sunday on the Sunday fun day at 3 o'clock. And then the week after that, we've got Terra Mystica all week, culminating in final on Saturday. And then we've got a Carcassonne on Sunday fun day. So if you want to play any of those, if you, if you join the uh, UK Online Board Game Series Facebook group, the link will be posted underneath this video, so have a look at that. And you can... Oh, sorry, I've been covering the chat up here, so you could have been watching it, so... Oh, it's too late now. It's too late now to see anything, I'm afraid, so I'll just fix that. Uh, you can join any of those you want. If you just arrive half an hour before the event is due to start, and sign up, tell us your Board Game Arena name, and then we will add you into that. So I will uh, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Please follow, like, subscribe, share everything you've seen. Uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, why not? I'm Stevie Weavy Wheel on Twitter or anything like that. It helps me and obviously it makes it worthwhile uh, for a lot of us. So hopefully uh, we get through this lock-in and if you want to come and join us playing games, you can do that. See you later.